those who are gathering, let them come on in. A bunch of folks out there coming in. Well, praise the Lord. So glad to have you here. You know, uh, I was concerned about it this morning. I said, well, another cold day, and I hope our people are not fair-weather Christians. You know what? They'll come to church. Well, we're glad to have you here. I just want to share something with you at the offset of the service this morning. I did receive a call this morning, and I want to share that with you. Uh, heaven is rejoicing today. Elaine is there in heaven. She went home to heaven this morning at about 540, and so... Rocky called me very early this morning, and uh, we need to pray for him and for God's grace. And uh, he said that he was okay. And, uh, and so we'll just pray for him. And he wanted me to tell you, so he wanted me to tell you thank you. Thank you for praying. And you know that's a good thing, amen? And so... Uh, we need to keep praying for him. And uh, when he called me this morning, uh, the transport hasn't even got there. And so he is waiting for that. And so I said, well, you're going to see it. There's going to be a lot of things that you're unfamiliar with right now. But I said, we'll pray for you, and we're going to be right there for you. Amen? Amen. We will be. And so... I just wanted you to pray for him today. Jonathan, why don't you come up here, brother, and pray for him today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here safely today, Lord. I pray that you would uh, be with Brother Rocky uh, even now, Lord, as uh, things are very fresh. I pray that you would just uh, continue to give him peace. It's such an encouragement to hear that he's been encouraged by our prayers, Lord. I pray that you would just continue to help us to be an encouragement to him and that uh, you would just uh, continue to help us to look for ways to be an encouragement to others as we've been an encouragement to Rocky, Lord. I pray that you would be with us in the services today pray that you would uh, just guide and direct, speak to our hearts, Lord. Uh, just help our hearts to be tender for you, and we just thank you and praise you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated.
hopefully everybody can see Jesus' impact in your life as well. Number 11, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. We'll start with that hymn this morning. Let's all stand as we begin. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. Or still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great, and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. Did we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing. Were not the right man on our the man of God's own choosing. Dust as could that may be, Christ Jesus it is he, Lord Sabbath his name, from age to age the same, and he must win the of darkness grim we tremble not for him his rage we can endure for lo his doom is sure one little word shall fail him on the last that word above all earthly powers no to them abideth. The Spirit and the gifts are ours through Him who with us sideth. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill. God's truth abideth still, His kingdom is forever. Take a moment and greet those around you this morning. Find someone you don't know and shake their hand and welcome them to Liberty Baptist Church.
continue singing once you find your place. Get some hand sanitizer. We're going to continue singing with number 245, Greater is He That Is In Me. We'll sing this chorus twice through. Greater is He that is in me. Greater is He that is in me. Greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Greater is He that is in me. Greater is He that is in me. Greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. Wonderful singing this morning. You may be seated. I know someone said about the hand sanitizer. There is hand sanitizer at the back of the auditorium, and there's some in the in the hallway out there. I know people are concerned about that, and that's you know rightly so. I I visit the hospital probably every week. I'm at the hospital, and when I go to the hospital and visit people, then uh, they have hand sanitizer all over the place, and so I'll use it when I. I use it before I go into the room, and then when I come out of the room, I'll use it again, and then after I get off the elevator, I'll use it again, you know, and so so uh, I use it a lot, and I, in fact, we have some hand sanitizer up here, so after I shake everybody's hand, I come up here, and I use the hand sanitizer on the uh, Clavinova up here, so I think it's a good thing to try to keep ourselves healthy. We had, we did have uh, one of our church family this week was in the hospital uh, with what's that type A flu and uh, Julie Rodriguez and uh, she actually last Sunday she got sick last Sunday they weren't in church they haven't they haven't been feeling well they weren't in church and but last Sunday she got so sick they took her to the hospital and actually on what's it what day was that Tuesday Tuesday, her husband called me and said that she actually went into a coma. And so, uh, and the kids all got sick, and they were they took them to the hospital. I think all but one of the children got sick. So we, so anyway, and then somebody told me this morning. I think uh, Mason, uh, Mason got sick this week, right? Their grandson is sick with type B influenza, and. Uh, and so, uh, anyway, I think we need to try to keep ourselves healthy. Amen. I, wash your hands a lot, and so uh, those are important things. But I'm getting I'm getting ready to take the offering. It's probably not a good subject when we're talking about that. But <laughs> it's just us here today, right? I am so glad that you're here today, even though it's cool. We've got a good good. Build church, amen, even though it's cool outside, I'm glad that you're here. Some, uh, the Shrivnovs, we support a lot of missionaries here. I was telling my Sunday school class this morning, we support missionaries and mission projects in over 200 countries, and uh, that's the Great Commission, amen, and we do. I'm not, I don't just say that, but really, I can show you that we are sending the gospel out into over 200 countries here at Liberty Baptist Church, and so when you support missions here, then you're supporting missionaries all around the world. And we, I get letters from missionaries and missionary projects. The Shrivnoths are missionaries there in Guyana. This is, uh, they said between November and December, they had 133 saved, 18 baptized. And they had in 2017, this is just one family in Guyana. Listen to this. And, and their mission, their church, they had... 1,255 saved. Isn't that great? Now, how many remember the Shrivnoffs? So let me raise your hands up. You folks remember them. When they were here, and I would take them, I took them out to lunch. Let me tell you this. When we were standing in line for lunch, they were witnessing to everybody. <laughs> I mean, everybody around. They were pulling our, our, they were using our church tracks, and they were passing these out to everybody. So when I say these numbers, this is not exaggeration. These people are really that way. You know what? We all ought to be doing that. Amen. 
We ought to be giving the gospel out like that. But then they had 105 baptized. We praise the Lord for that. They said in the month of December alone, they passed out 5,000 Christmas tracts. Praise the Lord for the job that they're doing. Brother Jeremy Rowland is a young man from our church. He is the executive director, general director of the uh, Baptist Church Planning Ministry. And uh, they're starting a new church on the, starting the 21st. They're starting a new church, Lighthouse Baptist Church in Hartford, Alabama. I think they, what did they start last year? Debbie, do you remember? Was that 10 or 12 churches they started last year? They started, they go in, they start these churches and uh, help them get going. And then uh, a, a young pastor will take that church. And so praise the Lord for that. Beams, I was telling our class, this is one of the areas we support beams. And that's... Uh, that means Baptist education and missionary service. What they do is send hardback Bibles, not paperback Bibles, but hardback Bibles to our missionaries all around the world. They sent uh, uh, 115,396 whole hardback Bibles last year to over 3,000 missionaries and uh, national pastors in a 150 countries, it says it right on there. I was telling our Sunday school class about that. 150 countries. Isn't that great, amen? Right there. By supporting them, we're sending Bibles to 150 countries. Isn't that something, amen? Just by supporting this one missionary right here. Praise the Lord for that. Meyer families, a family we took on for support last year, they're, they're in Spain. They're going to start their first church uh, in Spain in a place called uh, El Corcon, and it's off. It's a suburb of Madrid, and they said there's a population of 200,000 young family, and uh, praise the Lord for them starting, starting a new church there. So praise the Lord. These are just some of the missionaries. You go out in the, you go out in the, the foyer out there, and walk down the hallway. You'll see a bunch of uh, the missionaries that we support. There's a map. Uh, digital map on the wall there and it shows where our missionaries are we praise the lord for the missionaries that we support here at liberty baptist church and when you support missionaries here uh, then we support them all around the world we're not just saying that we can show you in over 200 countries and so we praise the lord for that that's how important it is for us to keep the ministry going amen Amen. see soul saved right here in sarasota we're reaching into our own community we praise the lord We had that walk through the Christmas story, and uh, we had, uh, what was it, 650 people come through that. We had 69 people get saved, amen? And so we praise the Lord for that. Pastor Dan, you come and lead us in a word of prayer for the offering today. Let's pray together. Our Father, we're grateful to be with your people today in the house of the Lord. We would ask you to be with those who are unable to be with us because of illness. Just uh, even this morning received several phone calls of those who were not able to come because they're sick or healing. And then, Lord, we pray to be with those uh, who are suffering today of loss. We pray that you would rock you, that you would encourage his heart, lift him up, and comfort him with the, of the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you for the knowledge of knowing that uh, we'll all see you lame again. And then, Lord, we pray that uh, it would all be for thy glory in the coming days. Lord, we thank you for the missionaries that you have brought our way that uh, care of lost souls. We're thankful for Brother Roland and the church planting. We pray that as these plant churches are planted, that that they would remain and that they would grow and that they would uh, be fruitful and multiply and many souls would be saved. And truly, uh, America is a needy nation for the gospel. And we pray that we would see and hear a great report of Beata Swivnall in Guyana. And uh, Lord, we thank you for their labor for eternity and we pray that you bless them for it and meet the needs of their families today. Thank you for beams and the spread of the gospel. And we pray that uh, we'd be encouraged by these reports today and want to uh, make sure we're part of 
this great plan that you've allowed us to uh, partner with you, dear Lord, and, and help us to be faithful in our giving. Lord, all good things, all good gifts come from you. Pray, Lord, that uh, we'd be grateful for the health that we have, the ability to work, and the way that uh, you have met the needs of our families even this past week. And uh, by faith, Lord, may we give and by obedience. And uh, dear Lord, we pray that we give through the, the zeal to, to see men and women come boys and girls to Jesus Christ. Thank you for the ministries you've given us right here in this church. Uh, even the children's ministries that are taking place next door at this time. And Lord, we do pray that if there be one on this campus today without Christ, that they would come to know Jesus as their Savior today. And we'll give you the thanks and the praise and the glory for that. And Lord, we pray that you would meet with us in a very special way. We pray that those who are discouraged be encouraged today, lifted up, and uh, ready uh, to be on the front lines uh, as we uh, go into the highways and byways and compel others to come in. Help us, Lord, today and strengthen us, we pray. And may you be uh, glorified in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Final song for this morning is number 137, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Please stand with me as we sing all three verses of this song as well. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell how the angels in hell rest sang as they welcomed his birth. Glory to God in the highest, peace and good tidings to earth. Tell me the story of Jesus, right on my heart every word. Tell story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Fasting alone in the desert tells of the days that are past. 
How for our sins he was tempted, yet was triumphant at last. Tell of the years of his labor, tell of the sorrow he bore. He was despised and afflicted, homeless, rejected, and poor. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell of the cross where they nailed him, writhing in anguish and pain. Tell of the grave where they laid him, tell how he liveth again. Love in that story so tender, clearer than ever I see. Stay, let me weep while you whisper, love paid the ransom for me. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. You may be seated. Looking forward to heaven, aren't we? First Thessalonians chapter one and verse one. 
Good to see Juanita here today. Glad that she's feeling better. Amen. Good to see Patsy back there. Glad to see her here with us today. She hasn't been feeling well. Good to see her here with us today. John Mulfair and Evelyn, his mother, we're glad to have them back with us. Amen. Good to see him here. Looks younger. I think he looks younger. I'm glad to have number of, just a number of families visiting here with us today. Folks back there told me they were here a number of years ago. We're glad to have them here with us. And families back. We're glad to have families back here with us uh, today. The Tylers, we're glad to have these folks back here with us this morning. How's your business going, brother? Is it okay? Good. Praise the Lord. Well, we're glad to see you here with us this morning. Good to have it's families over here, another family over here. He's a fireman here for years in Sarasota, and we're glad to have these folks back with their visiting her mother, and we're glad to have them here with us today. We're just glad to have you here with us this morning. And uh, I'm going to speak on the, the church this morning, the dynamic church. In 1 Thessalonians 1, 1, if you can stand with me, go ahead and stand. Paul, Silvanus, and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, very concise verse to begin this letter to the church at Thessalonica but it, in that one little verse sometimes you read a verse you kind of, sometimes you read and you you just kind of jump over a verse or you just kind of skim through it but if you'll stop and look at that thing that one little verse there tells us a lot about a church a dynamic church a church at Thessalonica was a dynamic church it tells us about how to have a dynamic church and if we're going to have a church, we might as well have a dynamic church, amen? <laughs> Why not have a dynamic church? And he tells us in that one verse how to have a dynamic church. I want us to look at that one verse today and have some understanding about a dynamic church. Let's bow in prayer. Father, I pray that you would bless your word as it's preached today. I'm going to look at this one concise verse this morning. But in that verse, there's so much that can help us and help us to be what you would have us to be. Help Liberty Baptist Church to be the church that you would want it to be. And Father, I pray that we'd get on board and we would be what you would have us to be and we would do what you would want us to do. Father, you would move in our midst. I pray that our people would say, yes, I want to be part of that. I want to be part of that. They would help us to build a dynamic church here, this local church. Help people to get on board. Help people to be part of it. And help us to do the job you have us to do. And then, dear Lord, there may be someone here this morning that doesn't know Christ as their Savior. And they're here for the first time. And they, they don't know what it means to be a Christian. Well, it means a lot. It means going to heaven. One of our church members is there in heaven today with you. We miss her already. But we know because of the wonderful salvation that we have that we'll see her again. Father, I pray that you would speak to our hearts this morning. Thank you for drawing us into the house of God today, and I pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. A woman and her friend went to Greece to tour that place, and, and they went to 
out to the ancient temples where they were crumbling and the pillars were falling on the ground and she said to her friend, she said, uh, take a picture. I want you to take a picture of me in front of this fallen column. She said, but when you take the picture, she said, make sure that you don't get my car in the picture or my husband will think I'm the one that knocked it over. <laughs> Two fellows were up in Alaska, and they were tourists, and they were taking pictures up there of the grizzly bear. There was a grizzly bear in a stream eating salmon, and they were taking pictures. And uh, all of a sudden, that grizzly bear got an eye on them and dropped the salmon and took off after them. And those guys went running, you know. <laughs> they were running as fast as they could run. And the one fellow said to the other, he said, he said, there's only one tree up ahead. What are we going to do? And the other fellow said, well, I don't know, but somebody's going to get a great picture. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a time when you would see a great picture and you would say, oh, I wish I had my camera. But nowadays we've got these smartphones and so we can take a picture where we're at, can't we? They said that this, uh, it's a big deal for people taking selfies. They, I saw on the news the other day that, that people even have a selfie smile. Did you hear about that? They were, yeah, they said that there's a, it's kind of like a half smile or something, you know, a selfie smile. They said there's even a selfie smile. And I thought, wow. My son-in-law at Christmas time, he had one of these new toys. It's, a, it's kind of like a long pole. What is it? A selfie stick. I didn't know what, I just called it a pole that you put your camera on. But I got a name for that. Now, but he, we were going to, that we're all sitting there for uh, Christmas dinner. And I said, wow, well, I guess I'll take the picture. He said, Dad, you don't have to do that. I said, I don't. He said, no. He said, I've got this, look at what I've got. And he brought that selfie stick out. And he said, my camera's right, or my phone's right on the end of that. And it's got a little button right here. And he said, you can, you can take the picture. I said, wow, look at that. And we were all sitting there. And I raised that thing up. And I smiled with my selfie smile. And I took the picture. And I go, whoa, look at that. He said, not only that, but look at this. It's got little legs. You can pull the little legs out. He said, he said look at this. I got, he had a remote control. I said, wow, look at all that. Why didn't you give me one of those for Christmas? <laughs> you can get great pictures no matter where you go. Oh, that's great. Here, in this passage, we have a great picture of the church. This one little verse gives us a great picture picture of a dynamic church so I want us to look at that today to build a dynamic church we'll see that it takes special ingredients and we have the ingredients to build that dynamic church right here first of all we'll take this verse we're going to look at this verse we're going to take it apart this morning and look at each phrase in this verse because it gives us a picture of a dynamic church to build a dynamic church first of all it takes leaders look at what it says Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus Timothy it took leaders to build this dynamic church sometimes we think that Paul wrote this by himself but he didn't write it by himself he wrote it with two other guys Paul Silvanus and Timotheus or Timothy helped him with that church they helped him found that church and they ministered to that church uh, Paul was the pastor of that church. These others were leaders in that church. You know what? It takes leaders to build a dynamic church. If we're going to build a dynamic church here at Liberty Baptist, you know what? It takes leaders to do that. Amen? Can't be done with just a pastor. It takes leaders. Paul had leaders. He had uh, Silvanus, and he had Timothy that helped him with his church. And they were concerned about the church. They were willing to give themselves. They were willing to go the extra mile. They were willing to go beyond what anyone else is willing to do. That's what a leader does. If you want to be a leader at Liberty Baptist Church, you need to be willing to go beyond what other people are willing to do. If you're going to be a leader, and it takes leaders to build a church, to build a dynamic church. Paul actually started this church. He came back on his third missionary journey in Acts chapter 20, verses 1 and 2, talks about Paul going back there. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him 
the disciples and embraced them and departed to go to Ma into Macedonia. And uh, when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece. And so he went back to that place. Timothy actually went back to that church. The Bible tells us they were having a difficult time. He went back to encourage them in the faith. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verses 1 through 6, Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. And so Timothy went back over there to help them. Paul stopped by there to help them. The Bible tells us that all three of them, uh, Paul and Silvanus and Timothy, all of them uh, wrote to, Thessal to the church of Thessalonica twice. And 1 Thessalonians 1.1, 1, 1, we already read that verse. And 2 Thessalonians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So all three of them were working together to build this dynamic church. And it takes leaders, not just a pastor, but you need to have a pastor who's going to stay there. Do you know the average pastor only stays at a church for three years? Three years. So that means some leave a lot less time. I know pastors... I've been here for a long time. I mean, I've been in this area for 45 years, in the sarasota Bradenton area for 45 years, and I know pastors that stay at a church only six months. It's not always all their fault. There was a pastor, pastor friend of mine up in Bradenton, who was pastoring a church up there, called me one day, and he said, Brother Jackson, I didn't want you to find out from someone else, but I'm leaving. I said, you're leaving, leaving? He said, I'm leaving, leaving. He said, I'm leaving on Sunday night. He said, I'm going to preach, preach my last message. My U-Haul will be packed, and I'm going to Tennessee. I said, well, what, what happened, brother? He said, well, I just can't stay here. He said, uh, they haven't paid me in six months. He said, I can't support my family. I have to leave. I said, I'm so sorry. I wish you'd have said something. I said, maybe we could have given you a hand or helped you out. We, I mean, we have helped churches out. There's a church right across town, Temple of Baptist. We helped them out. I said, we could have helped you. He said, well, we're already packed up, ready to go. I'm leaving right after the service on Sunday night. He said, my truck is going to be parked out in the parking lot, and I'm leaving. And he left. I had to help get a pastor for that church up there. There wasn't, they, the deacons were going to try to keep the church going. And I was afraid it was just going to stop. I said, let me find somebody. And I found a pastor. I got Arlo Elam to come down there because he's, re he's really gets a, he's got a pension. He's got a retirement. And so he could go there and they didn't have to pay him anything. He went there, built the church back up, put another man in there. And the church has been going since then. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. But sometimes it's not their fault. Sometimes uh, because they're not able to make it financially, then and that's the way that it goes. But it, you know, it's not just a pastor. You need leaders. We need people who will step out and say, you know what? I'm willing to, I'm willing to go the extra mile because that's what it takes for a leader. Uh, to be a leader, you have to go the extra mile. And so it takes leaders. We see that. But uh, we need, need to be faithful. We need pastors and we need leaders in the church. To build a dynamic church, it takes leaders. It takes leaders. I was thinking about this uh, matter I was reading another story about a pastor he wasn't uh, financially they weren't meeting his needs and and another church had uh, had called him and invited him to come and be their pastor and it was a much larger church and they were able to meet his needs and so the pastor told the church well he said it looks like we're praying about going to this other church and uh, one night, a deacon stopped by the, uh, by the pastor's home, and uh, the pastor's son came to the door, and the uh, deacon said to the pastor's son, he said, well, uh, are you folks going to leave? And the pastor's son said, well, I, I don't know. He said, father's in the den praying and asking for God's guidance. And the deacon said, well, where's your mother? Oh, she's upstairs packing. To build a dynamic church, it takes leaders. We need to have leaders. I'm asking you this. Will you step up and be a leader? Will you step up and be a leader? We need some leaders, amen? If we're going to build a dynamic church, 
We need people to step up and say, you know what? I'm going to be a leader. I'm going to be a leader because it takes leaders. The Bible tells us we had Paul, Silvanus, and Timotheus. I mean, they, we had leaders. To build a church, it takes special ingredients. First of all, it takes leaders. Secondly, it takes people. Look at what it says, next part of that verse. Unto the church of the Thessalonians. Unto the church of the Thessalonians. Paul addresses this letter to the church of the Thessalonians. Now, who is the church? Let me tell you, you know who the church is? You are the church. You are the church. It's not this building. We praise God for our, the buildings that God has given to us. God's given us some great buildings. We've got this building. We've got offices. Someone said something to me. It's wonderful to have a bookstore. A lot of churches, they don't even have a bookstore. We've got a bookstore back there. We've got a gymnasium out back. Full-size gymnasium out there. I, I, I see preachers all the time, and they say, Man, Brother Jackson, I wish I had that gymnasium that you have. I said, well, you just got to get down on your knees and pray hard like I did, brother. <laughs> you know what? God can do it for you. We have an education building filled with education, with, with rooms out there for education. We've got a kitchen. We've got a nursery with electronic little devices. They told me now they're contacting people with, uh, uh, they can contact them on their phones. I, I thought, my, oh, my. Praise the Lord for all of us. God's good to us. But you know what? The buildings are not the church. They're <laughs> not the church. You are the church. You are the church. The people, the church. The word church itself comes from a Greek word, ek kaleo. Ek meaning out of. Uh, kaleo means to call, to call out of. It's a called out assembly. Amen. That's what the church is. You're a called out assembly. We're to carry out the Great Commission. Without people, there's no church. To build a dynamic church we need people we need people who will participate in the ministry I praise the Lord that you're here today I'm glad that you're here today I like to watch people come up to church I like to see the church filled up I like to see people singing I like to hear it I like people you know what I like it sometimes you'll see me I'll be looking out there you know why we have those side lights you look in the for you out there, those side lights, I wanted those side lights out there. Because before we had those side lights, uh, those doors used to be solid doors, and so I'd watch out the window. I just like to see people coming to church, you know what? <laughs> Do you like that? I like that. When I first started the church 39 years ago, almost 40 years ago, when I first started the church, I stood out on the front porch and just greeted people as they come. I still like to do that. I like to greet people. I like people to come to church. I like to see you. I like to see you smiling. I like church. You know what? I like to go to church. <laughs> I wish we went to church every day. I do come to church every day, just about. I like it. We need to participate if we're going to have a great church. In Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 5, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we are have many members in one body, there it is, the church, we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member of one another. We're all members, amen? We're a part of the body of Christ right here, this church. Everyone needs to be participating. Everyone uh, working together here at this church. All of us participating. Unfortunately, there are people that like to sit on the sidelines. Would to God all of us would be serving. Do you know, do you know that 20, the average church, 20% of the people do 100% of the work in most churches. 20% of the people do 100% of the work. Where's the other 80% at? <laughs> They're watching. They're watching the work get done. Well, all of us, I'm saying, listen, we want to build a dynamic church. It takes all of us, amen? All of us. All of us. I, I'm so glad to see Guy and Juanita here this morning. I called Guy up this week. I said, I need your help, brother. I said, we're short of bus drivers we need bus drivers we need people you have to have a, a, a license 
uh, to drive those buses and vans. I said, I need your help. He drives a wrecker. He's got his own taxidermy business. He's busy all the time. His wife has not been well, well. But you know what he said to me? You can count on me, Pastor. You can count on me. I went in and told Pastor George, I said, we got somebody to help us. We need some help. Rose has been gone. It's good to see Rose. I, she, she was here. She's probably out in junior church. But she was here. She's been in Thailand on a missionary trip. I'm glad to have her back. Amen. <laughs> she drives for us all the time. Praise the Lord. But you know what? It takes people, doesn't it? It takes people. All of us. See, but I, I think that we ought to have people on these instruments all the time. They, they just ordered the uh, books. Aren't those books coming this week? The books for the orchestra is coming this week. And so hopefully we'll have all our orchestra up there again. Amen? Starting next Sunday. That'd be great. They all had to order books for them. That would be wonderful. But it takes everybody working together. Amen? All of us. It takes people participating. Let's not, let's, I thought to myself, boy, it'd be a, a lot better to have... 80% of the people are doing 100% of the work than 20% of the people. Amen? <laughs> we can all do the job. A pastor who was in the army, he was a combat soldier. He was saying the army, being in the army is like a church. Fighting in the battle is like a church. Because the church, we're fighting the battle. Amen? We're in a battle. We're in a raging a, a, a battle today. But he said it's so much uh, like that. He served on the front line. He said when he was on the front line, all of those soldiers that were on the front line, he said they were busy fighting that battle. He said they didn't have any time to do anything else. He said they were uh, guarding one another's back. They were helping. They were working together. It wasn't time to do anything else. There was no complaining. He said they were on the front line. They were battling. They were in a war. He said, you have your front line soldiers, and then you have your rear echelon soldiers. Those guys are several miles removed from the front line. He said when those uh, rear echelon soldiers, he said they have nothing but time. And he said, uh, those guys are complaining. He said they complain about the uh, officers. They complain about the food. They complain about the weather. He said they complain about everything because they got a lot of time on their hands. They're always complaining. He said being in the army and being in a battle is like a church. He said you have your front line church members. They're right up on the front line. They're doing the battle. They don't have time for complaining and arguing. They all, they're, on the, they're in the battle. They're warring against the old devil. Amen. <laughs> they don't have time for anything else. Then he says you have your rear echelon church members and they're not on the front line. He said they're the ones that are complaining. <laughs> he said they'll complain about everything. Got plenty of time to complain. He said being in the uh, army is like a church. Listen, we need to have front line church members. Amen? People on the front line. There's a lot of amens over here. Where's the amens over here? Amen? Let's balance this thing out. Someone went to visit a small church, and they said, Pastor, how many members do you have? He said, we have 100. They said, how many active members do we have? He said, they're all active. 50 active for me and 50 active against me. He said, they're all active. To build a dynamic church, it takes special ingredients. You know what? It takes leaders. We need some people to step up to the plate, say, you know what? I'm going to be a leader. Amen? I, I'm going to be a leader. I'm going to go the extra mile. We need church members who will participate, not just 20%. We need people who will participate. Then it takes the Lord. Look what he says there, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. The church is grounded and exists in the power of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. They're equal. They're one in power. If we're going to build a dynamic church, we need the Lord. Amen? <laughs> yeah, that might sound funny, but my friend, there are a lot of people that are building churches today that don't have anything to do with the Lord. I, I was witnessing to a guy out at the 
uh, tractor, what's that store? Tra tractor Supply? The Tractor Supply. I was witnessing to a guy there. He just moved here from New York. I was witnessing to that guy. And that guy said, well, I'm looking for a church. He said, and, 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 and there was a whole line of people. And he said, I want a church where they preach the Bible. He said, I want a church where they show the Bible references. He said, I want a church. I said, we're, we're that kind of church. We're, we're a Bible preaching church. We're witnesses. There's a whole line of people down there, and they're all listening to this. He said, I've been in those churches where they don't preach the Bible. I want where they show the Scripture. I want that. I said, that's the kind of church we are. We're a Bible preaching church. Amen? To carry our Bibles to church. <laughs> he said, I want a Bible preaching church. I said, that's what we are. The church needs to be built upon the Lord Jesus Christ. If we're going to have a dynamic church, it has to be built on the Lord. Amen? Did you, did you notice in that verse what he said? The Lord Jesus Christ. All three names. The Lord Jesus Christ. The name Lord speaks of his authority and power. Do you know what the name Lord means? Master. When you say that Jesus is your Lord, you're saying he is your master. Do you realize that? Is he your Lord? If he is your Lord, then he's your master. Then we use the name Lord. That speaks of his authority and power. Jesus speaks of his work. The name Jesus means Savior. So when you say the name Jesus, you're saying Savior. He's the Lord. He's our master. Jesus, he's our Savior. And Christ speaks of uh, his office. The name Christ means anointed one. It refers to the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. The church is founded upon the Lord Jesus Christ. This church was founded upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes churches start out right, and then they forget what they, where they started. You know what? I try to remind you, this church it was founded upon the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the foundation of this church. If we're going to build a church, we need to build it upon the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Peter 2.6 Wherefore also is it contained in Scripture, Behold, I say, in Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Matthew 16.18 and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We build a church upon anything other than the Lord Jesus Christ, and churches are being built on other than the Lord Jesus Christ today. You say, what are they building them upon? Marketing is one of the big deals today. They're marketing churches, just like they market uh uh, other things. Marketing. I've got the books back in my office. I've read these books about their marketing, and their marketing, they're convincing people about these churches just like, just like they would be to sell stuff at a store. They're marketing it. Do you know what? They can do all the marketing they want, but my friend, we need to build the church upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only that, but on celebrities. Celebrities are building churches. A pastor or a couple become celebrities and they build it upon that person. Let me tell you something. If a church is built upon a person or a celebrity, when that person leaves, you know what happens to that church? It dies. Here's something we've known for years, and we as pastors, we don't spread it along, but let me tell you what goes on. If you see a church and the pastor leaves that church, or an assistant pastor leaves that church, and the attendance goes down in that church, you know what? They weren't building upon the Lord Jesus Christ. They were building upon themselves. If God calls me home, or I leave, God directs me to leave, maybe he wants me to go to the mission field. I'm praying that he doesn't want me to go to the mission field, but I'll go, Lord, if you want me to go. And 
and this church were to die, you know what? It was because I built it upon myself. Folks, if you build it upon the Lord Jesus Christ, it's going to stay there. Amen? We need to build upon the Lord Jesus Christ. You see an assistant pastor leaves. You'll have an assistant pastor leaves the church. Listen to this. If an assistant pastor leaves the church and the people follow him or, the, or, the, or the, uh, they leave the church, you know what? That ministry was not built upon the Lord Jesus Christ. It's awful quiet in this place, but I'm showing something. We don't talk about this stuff. Us pastors know about this, and, and I've never shared this with you, but I'm telling you today, that's what happens. If you've gone to a church, and I know that many of you have gone to church, pastor leaves the church, the church goes down because people leave. You know what? That was built upon that person and not the, not the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to build the church upon the Lord Jesus Christ, building upon His Word. A few years ago, there was a... When you drive up 75 and you go up to Tampa, there was a big board up there on the wall. Uh, there was a big board, a big bulletin board up there, and it showed uh, a couple. There was a couple on that board, and uh, they had a church up there in Tampa. And they were building it. Was a, it was a huge church. They were building it up there. And, and when you would drove up 75, they had this great big billboard on the side and had their picture on it. Now, that couple, things were not going right, and that couple divorced. They were passing the church, and they got divorced. It was funny, because the next time I went by that sign, I, I actually saw it on the news. There were trouble... And uh, they separated. When I went by it again, just the lady's picture was up there, and they painted off the guy's picture. <laughs> I said, I wonder what's going to happen the next time I come up this way. And the next time I went up there, there were no pictures there. <laughs> they were building it up on celebrity, you know what? It split, and then it died. We don't build it upon a person. It's upon the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. We better build this church upon the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what makes it a dynamic church, amen? Built upon Jesus Christ. Remember that song, we sing it. Uh, Edward Moat. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I not, dare not trust the Swedish frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Jesus Christ. If you're looking for a church that wants to be built on Jesus Christ, this is the church. Amen? We're building it upon Jesus Christ. D.L. Moody. He pastored there in Chicago. Built the great Moody Church, which stood for many years, but... He was also an evangelist, and he went one time to join an aristocratic church. He's going to join this aristocratic church as an evangelist, and it was a, just a, a high people. And he, he, the Sunday that he was going to join the church, he brought a bunch of kids in. D.L. Moody was known for bringing in street urchins and bringing them into church. You know, he thought they need to bring in... Bring them into church. D.L. Moody had one of the first bus ministry. He used to pick up kids uh, on horse-drawn carts. And he would give the kids a penny to come to Sunday school. But he brought a whole bunch of kids into this church, this high-hat, high-aristocratic church. He brought all these kids, little street urchins in. You know, they weren't even dressed right. He brought them in there. And boy, these people didn't like it at all. <laughs> D.L. Moody went to join the church that day, and, and uh, you know what? D.L. Moody went to join the church, and they said, well, why don't you pray about it for another week? That's what they told him. D.L. Moody, one of the greatest evangelists ever, why don't you pray about it for another week? Because he brought these kids to church. Came back the next week, and they said, did you pray about it? He said, yes. They said, well, what did the Lord tell you? He said, the Lord told me not to feel bad if you didn't let me in. He's been trying to get in here for 25 years. <laughs> to 
build a dynamic church, it takes special ingredients, doesn't it? You know what? It, need, it takes leaders. We need some leaders. It takes people. We need some people to participate. It takes the Lord. We've got to have the Lord. And then it takes grace and peace. Look what he says, last part of that verse. Grace and peace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we know what grace means, unmerited favor. It means God's blessing. If we're going to build a dynamic church, we need God's grace, don't we? How do we get God's grace? When we commit ourselves to Him, God will give us His grace and His blessing. Is there anyone in this place that doesn't want the blessing and the grace of God? Is there a single person that doesn't want the grace of God? <laughs> When I was praying with Rocky this morning on the phone, I said, I'm praying for your grace, and I prayed for God's grace to be upon him. The grace of God. We don't deserve it. There's not a one of us deserve it, but God's grace, we need it. Amen? Every one of us need the grace of God. Every one of us need the blessing of God. God's grace. How do we get that? When we commit ourselves to him, he will pour his grace out to us. But we have to commit ourselves to Him. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 1, 14 and 15, And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. When we commit ourselves to Him, He pours out His grace to us. But we have to commit ourselves to Him. Amen. You want God's grace? Commit yourself to the Lord. We need God's grace. In our day-to-day -day lives, we need God's grace, don't we? We need God's help. But not only His grace, grace and peace. Do you see that? Grace and peace. When we commit ourselves to Him, then He gives us grace, but He also gives us peace. What is the word peace there? Is an interesting word. The word peace there means to be bound or joined together, to be woven together. So when we commit ourselves to Him, He gives us peace. He binds us. He unifies us together. We are unified in Christ Jesus. Boy, we need to be unified. Amen? We need that. He unifies us in Christ Jesus. When we commit ourselves to Him, He gives us grace and blessing. He gives us peace. We're unified in Christ Jesus. Man, do we need that. Amen? I don't know about you, I need it. We need to be unified. We need to be brought together. You see, when we're committed to Christ, each one of us, when you are committed to Christ, and you're committed to Christ, and I'm committed to Christ, we're committed to Christ, you know what? We're going to be unified in Christ, aren't we? All of us. Not going to be any dissension. We'll be unified. That's how you build a dynamic church. We'll have God's blessing. We'll have God's peace. Who of us does not need the grace of God. Who of us does not need the peace of God? We need God's grace and we need God's peace, don't we? Every one of us. This church needs it. And if we'll be a dynamic church, we need the grace and the peace of God. We need to commit ourselves to the Lord. John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, Give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. We need God's grace and we need God's peace. We need to commit ourselves to the Lord. And I'm asking, will you commit yourself to the Lord? <laughs> you know, we need some people who commit themselves to the Lord. My wife and I, I praise the Lord for my dear wife. I just love my wife. I... I thought of Rocky this morning. I thought that could have been me. You know what? The Lord's been gracious to us. Seven years the Lord's given me my wife. Amen? Amen? Told her she had cancer seven years ago. Did brain surgery on her. Told her me she'd only live a month. And then said maybe she'd live a year. But she's lived seven years. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just put it out of my mind. I just put it out of my mind this morning. I said, that could be you, buddy. You got to thank God for your wife. They told me the same stuff. But my wife, 
I praise the Lord for my wife. You know, God called me to start this church, but then God called both of us. I told her, I said, God's called me to be a preacher. God's called me to start a church. Do you still want to marry me? She said, yes. I didn't know everything we were going to get involved in, but and we've been through everything, you know what? <laughs> everything. <laughs> it's man alive. I, I, one of the evangelists came, he said, Brother Jackson, you ought to write a book. I said, well, I've written several books, but a book about this other stuff, I don't know. Who'd read that book? I don't know. I don't know, but I praise the Lord. You know what? We both committed our lives to the Lord, and we've been faithful to the Lord for all of these 40 years here. We committed our children to the Lord, and it didn't hurt our children at all. Our children are all living for the Lord. Amen? They're all living for God. Didn't hurt them. We committed ourselves. People say, well, you got to be careful. Oh, you know what? Just commit yourself to the Lord. My dear wife, she still goes with me, visiting every week. We went out on Thursday. We were gone most of the day Thursday visiting. I visited some of you folks Thursday. She goes with me. We go door to door, still to the door to door visiting. We visit the hospitals. I called her up on Friday. I said, listen, Rocky called me. They told him that Elaine may not make it through the weekend. We've got to go right now. She said, I'll be, I'm getting ready. We had other appointments and stuff. We just canceled the other appointments. We went over there and we spent time with them and ministered to those people. Amen. I had lots of stuff to do. I, always, I never finished my work. Someone says, do you ever, I never finished my work. My work is never done. Ever. If you want a job where your work is never done, the ministry is a job where your work is never done. Amen. There's always more people to see, more people to call. I, I thought about calling people this morning, but I didn't have time to call some people this morning to see how they're doing. We're committed. I'm telling you, folks, I'm committed. My wife is committed. We're still committed. I'm asking you to be committed. Won't you commit yourself? Let's commit ourselves. We want to build a dynamic church. I'm just saying, listen, I'm not afraid to be committed. I'm not afraid. I'm asking you to do the same thing. When we're committed, you know what? You won't have to be pushed to do the work of God. Amen? Amen. I praise the Lord we have people who are that way. If I called them up today, they would be there. They would do the job. I praise the Lord. We need many more people like that. Someone asked a pastor every day at the same time, he would go down to the railroad station and watch the train go by. One of the church members said, why do you go down to the train station every day to watch the train go by? He says, I like to see something I don't have to push. I like that. To build a dynamic church takes some special ingredients, doesn't it? <laughs> some special ingredients. Leaders, people who work. The Lord built upon the Lord, the foundation of the Lord. We're still an old-fashioned Bible preaching church here. We're not changing. We need grace and we need peace, don't we? And only God can give us that when we commit ourselves to Him. I'm asking you to come and help us to build a dynamic church. Lady went to her pastor. She said, Pastor, she said, I'm 39 years old and I want to get married. I want to get married. Pastor said, well, we've been praying about this for some time and uh, we just need to trust the Lord and God has a perfect plan for you he said you can't we just can't improve upon the will of God 
She said, well, preacher, she said, I'm not trying to improve upon the will of God. I just want to get in on it. <laughs> you know what? I just want you to get in on it. Will you get in on it? Will you just get in on it? We want to build a dynamic church. What? There's no sense in having a church if it's not going to be a dynamic church. Amen? Why not build a dynamic church like the church in Thessalonica? Why don't we get in on it? I'm asking you to get in on it today. Would you do that? Let's bow our heads. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. No one's looking around. Simple Bible message today about building a dynamic church. We have a, a picture here in 1 Thessalonians 1, 1 of a dynamic church, what it takes. I'm asking you to get in on it today. Will you do your best? Will you say, I'm going to commit myself. I'm going to, I want to be part and help. Maybe you want to be a leader. Uh, you'll be one of the people that say, you know what? I haven't been doing everything that I should. I, I'm going to get in there. I want, to, I want to, our church to be not just 20% of the people doing 100% of the work, but I, I, want to be, I want to grow that. I want to make that bigger. I, I want to help this church to be a dynamic church, to be what God would have it to be. I want the grace and the peace of God in my life and in our church. The church is the people. I want to commit myself so God's grace and God's peace will be upon us so we'll be unified in Christ. I want to get in on it. God spoke in my heart. I want to be part of it. I want to get in on it. And here's my hand. Would you pray for me today? I want to be part of it. I want to get in on it. And God spoke in my heart. Here's my hand today. Slip it up all through the building. I want to be part of it. I want to get in on it. I want to be part of that. I want to be a leader in that. I want to uh, be part of it. Hands all through the building. Thank you very much. Amen. Hands are still going up. See, I didn't raise my hand a moment ago, but here it is right now. Would you pray for me? Amen. Back there. Anyone else? You say, I didn't raise it a moment ago, but here it is. Thank you. Amen. Anyone else? Amen. I see your hand. Anyone else? I didn't raise it a moment ago, but here it is. I want to get in. Thank you. <laughs> we need to pray that God would make our church a dynamic church, like the church at Thessalonica, be dynamic for the glory of God. See, more souls saved, more lives changed. Maybe today you say, you know what? God's working on my heart. I need to be in a church. Would you pray for me? I need to be in a church. I, I need to serve God. I, I want to find a place where I can serve God and be faithful to God. Would you pray for me? I'm searching today. Would you pray for me? Slip your hands up all through the building. Thank you. Amen. 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 I'll pray for you. I will pray for you. And you need to pray. That God would direct you and show you where you can serve because it's through the local church. You know, one of the greatest needs that you have today, and the reason the church is here, is for salvation. That's the purpose, is for salvation. And today, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, the reason this church is here is not just for a, a meeting place, but the reason that we're here is so that you can know Christ as your Savior. We want to share the gospel with you. You'd say, you know what? I'm not sure that I'm saved. I'm not sure that I'm on my way to heaven. Would you pray for me? I would like to pray for you. Just slip your hand and put it back down. I'd like to know how to be saved. Thank you. I'd like to know that I'm on my way to heaven. We talked about Elaine being in heaven today. She knew that because she, there was a day that by faith she trusted Christ. You can know that for sure. And we can show you from the Bible how you can know it for sure. You say, would you pray for me? I'd like to know it for sure that I'm on my way to heaven. I don't know it for sure, but I'd like to know it for sure that I'm on my way to heaven. Could I pray for you? Would you just slip your hand up. Put it back down. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm not sure. Could I pray for you? Anyone else? Today, would you pray for our church? I'm going to ask you this. Would you pray that God would make our church a dynamic church? Would you pray that? 
Would you slip your hand? I'm going to pray for Liberty Baptist Church. I'm going to pray that God would make it a dynamic church. Slip your hands up all through the building. I'm going to pray that God would make it a dynamic church. Thank you. Thank you very much. Most of the folks in here. In just a moment, I'm going to have an invitation. We still do an old-fashioned invitation here at Liberty Baptist Church and invite people to come and pray here at the altar. And we'll invite you to come. And I would encourage many of you that raised your hands that I'm going to pray for Liberty Baptist Church. I would ask you to come and pray for us even this morning. Avail yourself to this altar, the front row, and pray that God would help Liberty Baptist Church to be a dynamic church. And then, uh, and then some of you today, you said, you know what? God has spoken to my heart about uh, being uh, committed unto the Lord. And you would come and commit yourself unto the Lord. Or today you would come and say, you know what? I want to be a leader in this church. I'd invite you to come and commit yourself to the Lord. Say, I want to be a leader here in this church. Or you would come and uh, you would say, you know what? I'm going to uh, I'm going to commit myself and my family to serving God here in this church. You would come today. Maybe today you'd come and you say, you know what? I want to join this church today. I'm going to invite you to come. In just a moment I'm going to have a word of prayer and then we'll have the invitation. Dear Lord, be with the invitation here today. You've spoken to our hearts, you've moved in our midst. There are many people, Father, that raise their hands for different decisions that they made today. And dear Lord, I pray that you would be with each one of those decisions. Dear Lord, I pray that you would work in their hearts and meet their needs. There are folks here that said, I'm going to commit myself to the Lord. I want to be a leader in this church. I, I want to be one that participates at Liberty Baptist Church. Dear Lord, I, I want the grace and the peace of God on my life and on this church. Dear Lord, I pray that they would come. I pray that folks would just come and join with this church here today. You've spoken to their heart. And, Father, they know this is a place that you would have them to serve. I pray that they would come. Be, be with this invitation this morning, dear Lord. We're committing it to you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to your feet. God spoke in your heart. I hope that you'll come and pray here today. As we begin to sing, why don't you come right now as we sing? We need your help. Why don't you come and pray for this church? You can just come and pray for us today. Brother, you want to come and you want to talk with this guy and make sure he's saved, brother? I don't know. This is the first time he's been here. You know there's room at the altar. You know there's room at the altar. You know there's room at the altar.